We don't really get nearly as much omega-3 as omega-6. And in this modern Western diet, we have to make an effort to get that in balance. Typically today, you're getting 20 times more omega-6 than omega-3. And they really should be about two to one. From the Weston A. Price Foundation, welcome to the Wise Traditions podcast for wise traditions in food, farming, and the healing arts. We are your source for scientific knowledge and traditional wisdom to help you achieve optimal health. Hey, Hilda here. A lot of folks take omega-3 or fish oil supplements in an effort to achieve the right balance of omega-3 and omega-6 essential fatty acids. I get why they're doing that. They've probably heard that the right balance of these fatty acids can protect heart health, reduce inflammation in the body, and improve neurological function. And our diets are woefully out of balance when it comes to these fatty acids. But is there a better way to go about finding the balance? This is episode 265, and our guest today is Sally fallon Morell, president of the Weston A. Price Foundation. Sally is a fount of knowledge when it comes to wise traditions. She's the author of Nourishing Traditions, Nourishing Diets, and she is a strong advocate for real food for optimal health. Today, she gives us insights on how to achieve the balance of omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids through diet and other lifestyle changes. You know, this balance was often naturally achieved and enjoyed by those with traditional diets. She gets to the crux of the matter, whether or not supplements are the best way to go about it, how we can get more omega-3s in the diet, whether omega-6 is all bad, how we can convert omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids for getting the most out of them, and the difference between cod liver oil and fish oil. She goes over it all. Before we get into it, I want to personally invite you to our conference. The Wise Traditions Conference is November 13th to the 15th in Atlanta, Georgia. It is one of the few alternative health conferences between now and the end of the year. And it's more important than ever to gather with like-minded people and hear from speakers who can help us navigate this crazy, toxic world. So sign up today at wisetraditions.org and take advantage of the early bird pricing that is still in effect. And if for some reason we have to cancel the conference, don't worry, you'll get your money back. Thanks so much, and I hope to see you there. This episode is brought to you in part by Bovine Tracheal Cartilage by Ancestral Supplements. Ancestral Supplements makes New Zealand-sourced, nose-to-tail organ meats, bone marrow, and bovine tracheal cartilage in simple, convenient gelatin capsules. Bovine tracheal cartilage has unique and powerful effects on wound healing, immune conditions, joint health, and other conditions considered to be treatment-resistant to conventional therapies. And bovine tracheal cartilage provides concentrated amounts of connective tissue, immunoregulators, and cartilage building blocks that are now missing from the modern diet. So visit ancestralsupplements.com to see what they can do for you. Ancestral supplements, putting back in what the modern world left out. Oh, by the way, this episode originally aired in August 2017. We pulled it from our archives. Enjoy. This is Holistic Kelda, and you're listening to Wise Traditions. Welcome to Wise Traditions, Sally. Uh, Hi, Hilda. It's great to be back as always. Well, people have been asking for us to do another principle from the dietary principles of the Wise Traditions diet. We're on number eight now. Yes, uh, number eight is about the balance of omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids. And the funny thing is, of all of these principles, the one principle that's kind of out there in the public is this idea that you shouldn't have too much omega-6 in your diet. And I think that's kind of funny because, you know, why of all these 11 principles would that be the one that appealed to the public in some way? Right. People are really starting to wrap their heads around this omega-3, omega-6 balance. But I'm still trying to figure it out. (laughs) Well, people have heard about it, but they don't understand it. Exactly. It seems like the most complex principle to me. It is. It's, It's the most complicated, and yet it's the one that people have heard about. Okay, so when we talk about our fats, and our fatty acid is just a fat molecule. That's the name for a fat molecule. We have two kinds of polyunsaturated fat molecules. Now, these are the kinds of fat molecules that are very fragile. They're always liquid, and we need them in small amounts in our diets. And most people understand that there's two basic types. There's the Mm omega-6 and the omega-3. Well, 
Omega-6 uh, is what we get a lot of in the Western diet. It's in all vegetable oils. It's also pretty high in nuts and seeds. But we're mainly getting this from the vegetable oils. So, for example, something like safflower oil could be almost 100% omega-6. Mm. Uh, now, we need to have the omega-6 in balance with the omega-3. And where do we get omega-3s? Well, we get them from seafood, and we get them from green vegetables, and egg yolks if they've been raised naturally. Mm -hmm. But uh, we don't really get nearly as much omega-3 as omega-6. And in this modern Western diet, we have to make an effort to get that in balance. Typically today, you're getting 20 times more omega-6 than omega-3. And they really should be about 2 to 1. 2 to 1, you mean... Twice as much omega-3 as omega-6. No, twice as much omega-6 as omega-3. Okay, good. I'm glad I asked that question. <laughs> okay. And we've kind of made an enemy out of omega-6 because, you know, we're getting too, way too much of it. But it's still a very important one to have. You, you don't want to eliminate it completely. What you don't want to have is a ratio of 10 to 1 or 100 to 1. Exactly. And it's about 20 to 1 okay. in the modern diet because we're getting all these vegetable oils and we're not getting enough seafood or organic egg yolks or organ meats. Organ meats are a good source of omega-3 also. Oh, okay. So here's how you fix this. Okay. One is you just don't use commercial vegetable oils mm -hmm. and don't eat anything that contains them. They are, are doing you no good for many, many reasons, and one of them is too much omega-6. Haven't you done a series called The Oiling of America? Yes, yes. And in this, you address the fact that those fats are hurting us much more than we know. They are the worst thing in, in the modern diet. Sugar's bad, yes. All the additives are bad, of course. Uh, genetically modified seeds are bad. But the very worst thing, the thing that's causing the most disease and the most suffering is the industrial seed oils. Mm -hmm. And one reason they cause a lot of suffering is because they're extremely high in omega-6. Wow. But another reason is they're just rancid and they break down into free radicals and things called aldehydes, which are extremely reactive, cause the buildup of plaque in the arteries, cause cancer, interfere with growth in children. I mean, the list goes on. And people don't know these things because you look at it on the shelf and it looks so pretty and yellow and clear and, and it they, smells clean and it has names like healthy oil and yeah. pure oil and or it's, American Heart Association approved. Yes. 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 Unfortunately, this is the number one enemy in, in the diet. Wow. So we need to eliminate all these oils that will get rid of the surf, surplus of omega-6 and we need to make sure we're getting some omega-3 mm -hmm. and we get that from seafood. Uh, we get it from cod liver oil. We get it from uh, egg yolks of chickens raised outside, uh, liver, organ meats. We get it from butter. Butter actually has a perfect balance of omega-6 and omega-3. Of course. Two to one. <laughs> <laughs> but what's happened today, Hilda, you know how Americans are. They always overdo things. Yes. And so people are taking lots of fish oil, mm -hmm. getting lots of omega-3, eliminating the vegetable oils, and... We, what we have now is some people, oh, and eating, doing a lot of flax oil, which yes. is omega-3. Canola oil has a lot of omega-3. And so now we have, in some cases, people getting too much omega-3. This is why it's confusing yes. to me. I'm like, what am I supposed to be doing? Yeah. Chris Masterjohn wrote a wonderful article talking about the differences. So, you know, what you would expect to see if you have too much omega-6 and what you would expect to see if you have too much omega-3. Oh, okay. So if you have too much omega-6, you're going to see a lot of inflammation. He has a whole list of skin problems and things Joint like pain. this. Joint pain, yes, arthritis. If you have too much omega-3, you have digestive disorders. You also have skin problems. You'll have uh, very dry uh, skin. So you, you definitely need both the omega-3 and the omega-6. In the right balance. In the right balance. Now, if you are eating according to our principles, not taking fish oil, <laughs> taking a little bit of cod liver oil, but not overdosing on all this fish oil, not using the vegetable oils, mm -hmm. you'll be okay. You'll have the right balance and mm -hmm. you don't ha really have to worry about it too much. Few. <laughs> but you know what? I'm going to put a link in the show notes to this article that you've referenced by yes, Chris Master it's, John. It's called Precious Yet Perilous. It's a wonderful title because these omega-3s and omega-6s are precious. 
We absolutely need them in small amounts, not large amounts. And they are perilous because if they're the wrong ratio or if we have too much of either of them, they can really cause a lot of health problems. Now, when Dr. Price was doing his world tour and recording things as the researcher and scientist that he was, in addition to being a dentist, did he note these omega-6 and omega-3 balances, or it's something that we came upon later? They really hadn't even been discovered in okay. Dr. Price's day. This came later in the 40s and 50s, and Dr. Price had pretty much finished up his work by then. Mm-hmm. One thing I will say, the animal fats are all uh, terrific for getting the right balance. Uh, Whether it's beef fat, lard, butter, they're all really, really good for this balance. They have a small amount of each. And if the animals are raised outside, they'll have some omega-3 in them. I love how eating this way, like I don't have to understand all the science in my mind around the omega-3, omega-6s, but if I eat according to these principles and the wise traditions diet, I'm going to be fine. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> now, there is a little bit of a complicating factor here. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we have the what they call the parent omega-3 and the parent omega-6. These are both 18 carbons long, uh, but there are longer versions and more unsaturated versions, and uh, people have heard about DHA and EPA. Yes. Okay. These are types of omega-3 that are actually much longer, more fragile, and they are in fish oils. Okay, Mm -hmm. and we need them in very small amounts. They're very important for neurological function, lots of things. But there's also a special omega-6 that's longer and more unsaturated, and that's called arachidonic acid. And we get that from butter, Ah. (laughs) animal fats. Basically from animal fats is the only dietary source of arachidonic acid. And without arachidonic acid, you're going to have a lot of problems, skin problems and digestive problems for sure. I've heard of this arachidonic acid, yes, yeah. but it always makes me think of an arachnid, like a spider or something. Well, yeah, it's actually named, it comes from the root of the word for peanut. Oh, really? Because there is a, a there's this kind of fatty acid in, in peanuts. It's 20 carbons long, so that's where it comes from. But we do need it, is what you're saying. We definitely need this. And again, if you eat animal fats like our ancestors did... If you eat egg yolks, if you eat organ meats and butter, you're getting your arachidonic acid. You don't have to worry about it. Is there a problem if you get too much? I think it'd be very hard to get too much arachidonic acid because there's just not a lot of it in our food. So I don't think that's a problem. But I do think there's a problem with people getting too much EPA and DHA because they're taking fish oils or flax. Well, not flax oil doesn't have that in it, but definitely the fish oils. And I think a lot of people are taking fish oil because they think, they hear cod liver oil is good for you, so they think fish oil, cod liver oil, it's all the same thing. Exactly, and it's not the same thing, especially the brands of cod liver oil that we recommend. These have not been heated, and they're uh, safe, and they have all the natural vitamins. Fish oil is a product of the fishing industry. They're highly processed. They're heated to 230 degrees and boiled for hours, and these are your very fragile omega-3s. And we just don't recommend them. Um, they're, they're very rancid. Even if they're in a capsule and they look and smell fresh, mm-hmm. uh, they are rancid. Oh, goodness. How much cod liver oil should a person take? Well, again, because there's a lot of omega-3 in cod liver oil, you don't want to take too much. You want to make sure it's a cod liver oil that has not been heated so those omega-3s are not broken down. So our recommendation is one to two teaspoons a day, mm-hmm. and that must be balanced by getting enough omega-6 in your diet. So that means that you're eating animal fats, uh, you're eating uh, grains and, um, you know, other normal foods. Right. And you'll get those omega-6s if you do that. Coming up, Sally explains what we can expect in terms of omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids from grass-fed versus grain-fed beef. She also gets into the science of how our bodies can convert these fatty acids to the long form so we can get even more benefits from them. You're listening to the Wise Traditions Podcast from the Weston A. Price Foundation. We pause now to recognize our sponsors. Thanks to many people just like you, North Star Bison is celebrating over 25 years of healing the land and feeding people well. Their focus from day one at North Star has been to raise meat as nature intended to regenerate vital native habitats that sink mega amounts of carbon, which improve air and water quality, and support native wildlife, trillions of insects, and even fish. 
all while providing nutrient-rich, deeply nourishing foods that taste amazing and leave us feeling satisfied. At North Star, they even field harvest their animals to respect and preserve the dignity of life, as well as provide the tender, superior quality of product that nature intends. At North Star Bison, their flagship product is their 100% grass-fed and finished bison, but their offerings have grown to include Rocky Mountain elk, 100% grass-fed and finished beef and lamb, rabbit, pastured corn and soy-free pork, corn and soy-free chicken and turkey, 100% grass-fed raw cheeses, wild Alaskan sockeye salmon, raw pet foods, and so much more. Our family recently got an order, and we are just head over heels in love with North Star Bison. Their products are top-notch, as they say, and the taste is delicious. So order from them today. Go to NorthStarBison.com and spend over $250 and get free shipping. And feel free to use the code WAPF at checkout to get an additional 10% off your order. Again, go to NorthStarBison.com and rediscover food as nature intended. And this episode is brought to you in part by Bovine Tracheal Cartilage by Ancestral Supplements. Ancestral Supplements makes New Zealand sourced, nose to tail, organ meats, bone marrow, and bovine tracheal cartilage in simple convenient gelatin capsules. The life work of Dr. John F. Pruden showed that bovine tracheal cartilage had unique and powerful effects on wound healing, immune conditions, joint health, and other conditions considered to be treatment-resistant to conventional therapies. All of these conditions were immune in nature, with the exception of the wound healing studies. According to Dr. Pruden, bovine cartilage closely resembles fetal mesenchyme, the primordial tissue from which muscle, bone, tendons, ligaments, skin, fat, and bone marrow, the heart of the immune system, all develop. Bovine tracheal cartilage provided concentrated amounts of connective tissue, immunoregulators, and cartilage building blocks that are now missing from the modern diet. So visit ancestralsupplements.com to see what they can do for you. Ancestral Supplements, putting back in what the modern world left out. This is Holistic Hilda, and you're listening to Wise Traditions. Someone said if you get conventional meat that is not grass-fed and it's probably got antibiotics and hormones and things like that in it, the balance of omega-3 and omega-6s in that meat is different than the meat that's pastured. Okay. Is that true? Here's another huge misconception, and it started off in the early days with this marketing campaign for grass-fed meat. And they said, eat this grass-fed meat because it'll be much higher in omega-3. And I remember I was actually at a debate. This was almost 20 years ago. And I, I had worked with Mary Ennig, and I just knew that this was not true. In all beef, all beef fat, uh-huh. the, the amount of omega-3 and omega-6 is very small. It's, it's not more than... One percent of the total fat. Ah. So it's it's not an issue really. What happens when you grain fed meat? Yeah, you um, get a little bit less omega three, but you get a lot more monounsaturated. That's what's in fat. If if you're as a person gaining weight, gaining fat, you're gaining uh, monounsaturated, the kind of fat that's in olive oil. Yeah. When you feed grains to animals, uh, they, that's what increases in their fat. Again, the amount of omega-6 and omega-3 is always very small, usually less than 1%. Small enough to be negligible, I would say. Yes. And uh, what I said in this debate, I said, you know, all why are we grass feeding? So we get all these wonderful vitamins in the fat and more minerals in the fat. And they were saying, well, grass-fed is good because it's lean and there's more omega-3. I said, the goodness is in the fat. You want more fat? (laughs) (laughs) And what happened was people would eat this lean grass-fed meat and they wouldn't like it. And it was tough. Uh And I think in the end, it really hurt the grass-fed movement. Whereas the grass-feeding people should have been looking at how do we make this grass-fed meat fat? Uh So it tastes good and it's delicious and you get the benefits of all the extra vitamins that are in the fat. So that misconception came from maybe a marketing push that was, was unsuccessful. Actually. It was uh, not really based on science, mm-hmm. but they thought that's what would appeal to the public. Mm-hmm. So Sally, I want to wrap my head around some of this science. Let's talk about the conversions of the omega-3 and omega-6 to the long form. Okay, right. So we've got your omega-3, it's 18 carbons long, and... It can be longer and more unsaturated till we get the EPA and DHA, which I think one of them is 22 carbons long. Mm. And then we have your omega-6, 
Uh, it's 18 carbons long, but it can be converted into the longer form, which is arachidonic acid. Mm -hmm. Now, some people can actually do that very well themselves. So they could be eating some almonds and get some omega-6 from the almonds, and they could turn that into arachidonic acid. Uh, some people can eat, um, get some omega-3, say, from flax oil, and they could, they're good converters, and they could make EPA and DHA out of it. But in principle, human beings don't do that very well. Okay. And especially if we have any health problems, mm -hmm. if we're eating too many carbs, for example, it's hard to make that conversion. If we're missing vitamin B6, we can't make that conversion. Uh, if we have too much omega-6, we won't make the conversions in omega-3. And if we have too much omega-3, we won't make the conversions in omega-6. I, I wrote an article about this, uh, it, trying to sort out the science. Yeah. It's called Tripping Lightly Down the Prostaglandin Pathways. <laughs> That's on our website. A but, catchy title. <laughs> yeah. uh, so again, uh, you know, everybody's different. But mm -hmm. I, for example, I suspect that uh, certain groups, uh, for example, uh, in Africa and India, these people, you know, long time on their same traditional diet. Yes. I suspect that these people are good converters. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the West, we have had many generations of poor diet, too many carbs, alcohol can affect this, being too thin or being too fat can affect this. Mm -hmm. So there's just a lot of problems that affect our ability to make these longer versions that we need. We really need them to be healthy. So again, this is where the grass feeding comes in. Um, you eat a egg yolk from a grass pastured chicken. Mm -hmm. It's going to have that arachidonic acid in it. It's going to have the uh, DHA in it all ready made for you. All set for me. Yeah. But is there any way for a person to go from a poor converter to a better converter? Yes. Uh, getting your health better, getting a better balance of omega-6 and omega-3, getting your weight right. Mm -hmm. If you are uh, drinking a lot of alcohol, cutting back on that, mm -hmm. cutting back on sugar, getting more zinc in the diet. Zinc is uh, really critical for this. So the, yes, there are lots of things you can do. And when your balance is right, tell me some of the health benefits we can expect. Well, you can expect a nice skin, easy digestion, you know, keen mind, yeah. <laughs> no brain fog. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. You know, one of the things I think is really neat is that a lot of the food combinations that we like are, will combine omega-6 and omega-3. So, for example, smoked salmon and sour cream or caviar and, and sour cream, you'll get the omega-3 in the salmon or the caviar and uh -huh. the omega-6 in the cream. Oh. Um, another one is liver and bacon uh -huh. or uh, liver cooked in lard. You'll get the omega-3s in the liver and you'll get the omega-6s in the lard. So there's a lot of really nice food combinations that we think, gosh, this goes together very well. Like butter on spinach, for example. Uh -huh. Get omega-6 and omega-3. So I think that's kind of neat. These things that taste really good together yeah. are also giving us a nice balance. I love that. Mm -hmm. So something we're craving might be because it's giving us just the right balance of this thing. Yes, or some typical food combination mm -hmm. is one that is, gives us a nice balance of omega-6 and omega-3. What about, I'm thinking about how you were talking about egg yolks. What about like egg salad? Because you've got the creaminess and the mayonnaise that might yes. have, would that be a good balance? Yes, of... absolutely. Yeah, ding, there you ding, go. Ding, ding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I also wanted to ask you about grains. What is the role of grains? Do they offer omega-3s or omega-6s? Some grains do. Uh, Flaxseed is very high in omega-3. And the flaxseed oil was considered very healthy in places like Russia Scandinavia, where they ground the flaxseed to get the oil. Wheat has got a lot of omega-3. And the wheat, you know, we've made a kind of a villain out of wheat. And for many people, it, it is a villain. But in the old ancient times, wheat was the best grain. It was considered the best grain, the most spiritual grain. Ah. And that possibly that's because there was a lot of omega-3 in the wheat. Um, walnuts are full of omega-3, not full of omega-3, but they have a higher content than most. That's why you, when you have walnut oil, you keep it in the fridge mm -hmm. because the omega-3 breaks down very easily. That's why walnuts will go rancid easily. Yes, I've noticed that. You keep that. your walnuts <laughs> in the freezer. Uh -huh. uh, so, yes, there were some plant sources of, of omega-3 for sure. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And should we combine those with other foods? 
Well, of course, you put butter on everything. <laughs> <laughs> and now, an interesting oil is rapeseed oil, which we call canola oil today. And uh, canola oil has about 10% omega-3. And it was used as a marketing tool. Say this canola oil, we're going to aim it at the Heart up, healthy. Yeah, upscale market, health-conscious market, because it's got a lot of omega-3, and it's very low in saturated fat. But when they fed the canola oil to animals, they developed a lot of problems. Wow. Um, it's too low in saturated fat. And the other problem is that because canola oil is so highly processed, like all of these oils, lots of heat. You know, these oils are heated at least five times oh my goodness. before they go into the bottle. Those fragile omega-3s break down. And so you've got a lot of breakdown products in the canola oil. So people think they're ingesting a really great oil and yes. putting it on their salad and they're really... Yeah. I mean, now, in, in, for example, in India and China, they had these uh, people who came around. They had a stone press. Usually they had a little donkey pulling this stone press and they would put the flax seeds in there and grind them or the, or the uh, rape seed. And it was consumed right there immediately. So it was fresh. But that's not what we do, of course. We are highly processing these in horrendous ways. Well, it reminds me of raw milk, that raw milk and pasteurized milk are two very different products. That's exactly right. So the same with this canola. Same with the oils, same mm-hmm. with the canola oil. Well, so we're beginning to wrap up now, and I have to ask you the question I often ask my guests. If the listener could only do one thing to improve their health, and I guess in this case it would be related to omega-3s and omega-6s, what would you say that they should do? Well, I would say don't take fish oil. I'm very concerned with this big push to have everybody take fish oil. And people who think they're doing the healthy thing are taking fish oil. Right. And I, that's that would be my one piece of advice. I mean, I've already advised everyone to eat plenty of butter. Yes. And to, and to take cod liver oil in small amounts mm-hmm. because there you're getting the A and D. But I really would warn people about fish oils. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Sally. Thanks, Hilda. Our guest today was Sally Fallon Morell. Visit her website, nourishingtraditions.com, for her blog. And I'm Hilda Labrada Gore. You can find me at holistichilda.com. And for the show notes for this and every podcast episode, visit our website, westonaprice.org, and click on the podcast page. And now for a review from Apple Podcasts Love from Paulina Graciose. Wonderful, informative podcast. I love it. Hilda is a terrific host. Thanks, Weston Price. Paulina, it is our pleasure. Thank you so much for the kind words. Please feel free to go ahead and rate and review the show yourself on Apple Podcasts. Maybe we'll read it on an upcoming episode. That's it. Thank you so much for listening, my friend. Stay well. Hasta pronto. On behalf of the Weston A. Price Foundation, thanks for listening. We have many free resources to support you on your health journey. Visit WestonAPrice.org to find podcasts, articles, videos, and more. You can also find a local chapter near you for help in finding sources of great food. We invite you to support the Foundation's mission of education, research, and activism by becoming a member. Thanks again, and take care. Wise Traditions is a project of the Weston A. Price Foundation for wise traditions in food, farming, and the healing arts. The content on this podcast is provided for informational purposes only and is not intended to substitute for the advice provided by your doctor or other healthcare professional. It is not intended to be, nor does it constitute healthcare or medical advice.